Hey everybody, it's Brian here from quantlabs.net. Uh, as probably a lot of people are probably confused just as much as I am on, we'll call it at least a four-way battle on how to prototype with uh, different uh, tools, programming languages to build trading models and specifically quant, quantitative and or quantitative uh, type of strategies. Now, there's probably a four-way battle that's been brewing for quite a while. R, Python, uh, MATLAB, and soon to be, and maybe already, F-sharp. So I'm going to talk about each one, and I'm going to talk about the pros that I'm seeing uh, with each and how uh, I plan to integrate them all as I come out of my little math study and uh, what I've got and uh, where we're going to go over the next uh, couple of weeks. Okay, so first, let's talk about R. R has got a really, really good, powerful uh, package called QuantMod. I really like this one, just specifically, as you can tell, just from the charting, uh, charting capabilities. It's quite nice, it's quite easy. It's not fast, but if it's just for prototyping or just for, ca we'll call it casual, <laughs> uh, cl uh, click, click in the point and click type of trading, this is a great, a package to start with um, and uh, you can just easily add these indicators at the bottom as you'd see any other mainstream type of um, trading platform now that's one of the big advantages with R there's a couple other ones but specifically quant mod is a big one uh, and there's some other really cool things that you can do with it as an R package now I'm not going to get into the highlights of it, but I just wanted to highlight this is one of the big advantages that I have not yet seen with other uh, packages that you can get with any of these uh, type of uh, uh, languages. Now, as we come into uh, uh, Python, um, I've been watching a couple of videos, uh, just more like a crash course on all the mainstream type of our packages that are, are out there. NumPy, um, and a few other ones. I'm going to talk about another one called uh, Matplotlib. Um, this is a fairly primitive, I haven't really, honestly, I've not played with this. this is one of the things I'll be uh, looking at. Um, but charting is obviously important, uh, specifically when you're trying to go up against uh, MATLAB. Um, so obviously you want these type of charts uh, for distribution, uh, your um, bar graph or your plots. Um, this one I kind of like for calculus, which that would be kind of handy. And these sort of things as well, and blah, 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 blah. But this is all basic stuff you can find in any major programming language. So this this looks okay, um, but I'll leave it at that okay. I haven't played with it. Uh, it looks like we can do the job. But um, specifically when I'm looking for things like this, but again, you can get that with um, with uh, MATLAB, that, that, these two for pricing, this as well with the volume, you know, little important things like this. But but this this is quite interesting. You can get the 3D uh, plots as well, which are obviously important. He maps at some point will be important to me. So this covers all the basics, which is good. Um, but when you come into uh, Google, um, Matt Lab, sorry, Matt Plot or is, seems to be not the most popular with these two other ones, PyGal and Plotly being the more popular ones. Now, again, I've not played with these, but um, don't ask me, uh, are they prettier looking uh, charts? Uh, they're just pretty basic stuff with a bit more um, indicators and stuff, but again, nothing to uh, write home about. This one, um, the Plotly, um, this, this one I, I think is really, really important uh, here. Uh, the streaming, this is really cool. I have not yet seen anything like this. It seems to be pretty fast. Um, there is a, um, this capability, which is kind of nice. I've seen that in WPF and uh, the other one, um, what's it called, Dev, Dev Express, uh, but that's a fairly expensive one. But again, this is all for free. Okay, so there's some pretty cool stuff there with, with uh, Plotly. Um, so again, I'm just highlighting what I'm seeing. I haven't played with it. Um, and I think this, uh, let me just see. Yeah, that's just all the basic stuff that we've seen. And, um, you know, again, 
these type of things will be important to me with these distributions and the probability and PDF, CDF stuff. All right, so that is um, uh, R and um, and, uh, and Python. Um, but obviously there's a lot more to Python than just charting. I'll be investigating more of those, uh, specifically more integrating with C, uh, parallel uh, GPU type of integration within uh within um, Python as well. <clears throat> so these are options available uh, to me, um, but I'll get into what I'm looking at in the future. So that brings me to um, MATLAB. Now, none of these packages, and I, and I still think to this day that MATLAB is the king of all of them, all the prototyping languages, well, is that's what you want to call them. I still think MATLAB is the king, and there's six reasons why, because I've not yet seen anything that either uh, R or MATLAB have. Yes, it is a, a commercial product, um, but what I try to stress is that, yes, these are open source um, uh, languages and technologies and stuff, but I always feel that there's always something that comes at a price when it comes to open source and free. It could be a productivity. It could be, oh, uh, your, uh, your next package is out of date with something else, and you're Pretty well got a broken script on your hands and when it comes to support who do you run to so you're pretty well left on your own so let's just go over uh, some of the big advantages with uh, MATLAB despite it being a commercial product you get the mu pad which is gonna be part of my workflow uh, to generate um, algorithms coming out of the uh, math study I'll be going on about actually I've gone on about it enough where I feel that I'm trying to do away with as many dependencies in terms of libraries uh, as possible. So I like to hand code my uh, algorithms over time, and that's what I would like to do. And I think MuPad's a great tool to do that. Now, at the end of the day, I don't think this is the smartest way, um, but when you're starting out in the world of algorithm development and uh, building more sophisticated and complicated uh, strategies you try to find the quickest way to build those strategies it might not be the smartest uh, but I, I still feel that these set of tools may be the best out there to do that and again this can be done uh, in its own language which is part of the mu pad now uh, some people might say well it's kind of like my Python I find again I haven't done a full comparison yet but I do think, uh, as it stands, MuPad on its own will be a lot more powerful than IPython. Um, now, of course, uh, MATLAB also has that second product that I love uh, called uh, Simulink, where you can visually uh, build coding blocks, where you have your inflow outflow for your trading decisions. We have the state flow, which could be no different than complex event processing, where you can, again, visually build uh, visual uh, flow charting, if you're used to flow charting with something like Visio, you can do that with state flow. And of course, the really powerful part is the cogeneration of your Simulink uh, model. Now again, this is a Simulink systematic model. This is where you uh, build your um, algorithm based type of trading model, trading strategy, and you drop it into your systematic uh, model, which ha has your inflow for your data or your feed and the outflow which could be either your trading signals or actually your trading decisions. Um, again, all of that can be coded up through uh, code generating uh, via the Simulink coder uh, which uh, can co-generate into C, C++ or HDL uh, for FPGA. This is very, very powerful and no matter what you pay for, this tool right here, this coder, is going to be worth its weight in gold because what are you going to pay for a proper coder to do these sort of steps to, to enable you to uh, code up a, a strategy uh, uh, let's say in C, C++ and how much would it cost you to do it on an annual basis you're looking at probably 100k so this right there with all the bells and whistles would be enough for four years of a coder um, just something to think about uh, and also you get your you know pretty well your your cutting edge uh, support as well so that's something to uh, consider now another powerful feature that I love about MATLAB is the MATLAB production server so it's kind of like an Apache server like type of a server you can take all your MATLAB scripts and deploy them into a production server so that your client code be it Java or C sharp or even .NET 
can talk to this production server and connect into it and actually connect into uh, your MATLAB scripts and it can be as many as you want in terms of uh, client support. Obviously you've got to pay for the extra uh, licenses and workers for that. Um, and then can you get the distributed code, uh, well, this should be a distributed computing uh, server, um, which is pretty pretty sophisticated. Um, just do the fact of, uh, you know, if you want to do Tesla boards, you want to do fancy schmancy, um, Nvidia or whatever. Uh, this is done out of the box and it shields it and you just basically add three lines to your script and you're ready to go. It's that easy and that's why you pay for it. You don't have to, to go through the mumbo jumbo of the NVIDIA um, CUDA library, which is, God, it's, it's pulling your hair out with that. And of course, the other uh, more older uh, builder tool or toolboxes that I've worked on three plus years ago is, of course, a MATLAB coder, which converts your C or C++. God, my typing is awful tonight. Um, and uh, that has its limitations in terms of what it can support. Um, but again, if you are, what I'm planning to do is just to work on pure, pure math and algorithms and do away with all these uh, fancy uh, toolboxes from like the financial or the trading toolbox or the econometrics. Uh, this coder could be still a nice option, but do realize that it does have limitations on the kind of functions that it will support from those uh, toolboxes I just mentioned. And then of course, um, being able to extend your trading scripts into Excel. Java or .NET with the builder uh, toolboxes like be it builder EX, builder JA, or builder NE. I've gone on and on about these. These are really good, but now come better tools like the production server. And of course, these two other ones make a huge difference. Again, um, if 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 anybody can tell me um, in Python or R these these equivalents and both of these uh, languages, Python and R, be very appreciative to uh, look into um, because these are costly. Um, but at the end of the day, when you factor in uh, the, to, to code these up in the equivalent and the pain you go through and the debugging iteration, these are worth their price in gold. Now, of course, other people may have other opinions on that. That's their business. They do what they want. Their life, they do what they want. But I just like to be quickest to market with trading ideas. Okay, so that's where we're at and uh, I have been looking, as you know, into F-sharp. Now F-sharp, that one thing I really, really like about it is um, this thing called agent programming so that you're able to uh, basically have server uh, side programming uh, to be able to have agents that can uh, feed in uh, your data feed, market data feed and, and chart even in 3D in almost real time is done through this agent programming and of course that also comes with uh, out-of-box parallelism as well now these uh, API's which are part of the .NET framework come at no extra cost let me repeat that no extra cost now yes F sharp is uh, can run under uh, Linux but please don't insult me with mono because it's not a right way to do it. If you're doing some basic web server, maybe, but not a trading system, sorry. Um, and you know, of course, we get nice integration with SQL Server and Excel. And again, um, MATLAB has the same uh, integration into databases and Excel quite nicely. I played with it. All of these I, I've posted extensively on both my Quant Labs uh, .NET blog. Check it out there. And of course, the YouTube channel at quantlabs.net, sorry, quantlabs, where uh, you can search any of these uh, products, toolboxes, or whatever. I got a lot of, lot of, um, I've done a lot of investigation with these products. On top of that, I've got courses built around this as well, and my membership pretty well covers a lot of this. So at the end of the day, um, when you factor in um, oh, one other thing I should mention that is uh, something that uh, I've not mentioned. What F Sharp Microsoft has been doing is they're trying to move into uh, data science. They're trying to be the kings of data science, let's say, the next thing after big data. So what they've got is they've got the Azure Cloud solution. And so uh, that could be really nicely integrated with uh, Azure. So all your scripts, testing, and even your machine learning and all the, the resources would 
uh, reside on Azure, and you just pay for usage on uh, the services of Azure, which is fairly cheap. Um, and you pay a usage fee, so you don't have to go out and buy cards and all that stuff. Um, it's part of the Azure. Okay. Not only that, but the Azure also has a SQL Server as well on on um, Azure as well. So you pay for that on a per usage basis. So it's kind of cool. Now, here's the other big surprise: is that R or Microsoft now have deployed all the R popular packages, like 350 packages, onto Azure. And you can talk to those uh, our packages on Azure through F Sharp. Okay, this is a huge deal. Um, so um, this is one of the big exciting things I love about what F Sharp is bringing to the table. Uh, and uh, you can now talk to R. So hopefully, if I decide to uh, integrate with something like QuantMod or whatever other cool R uh, packages are out there. I'm sure I can um, integrate those into uh, F Sharp. Now the other cool thing is because you're using .NET, um, a lot of people don't know this, but you can also integrate all your .NET code um, into uh, Python itself. So that's all done through, I think it's called the PVCS or PCVS or something like that. Um, so that's, a, that's an option, and of course you can integrate with C++ itself, with C++ Pure uh, for cross-platform, or C cross-platform, uh, as well as some bastardized version of C++ if you want to do that, uh, thanks to Microsoft. So, uh, all in all, um, what do I think? Uh, I personally think that MATLAB is still the king of all these prototyping languages, just do these um, six advantages I've not yet seen on terms of sophistication with the GUI front end for a lot of their functionality, plus all these unique products you can't get elsewhere, uh, specifically Simulink with state flow, the code generation capabilities to C, C++, and HDL for FPGA, as well as the production server as well is very powerful. Yes, they, as I said, they do cost, I'm not gonna go on about that, but at the end of the day, uh, I do think for MATLAB is worth its weight in gold. As well as um, if you are looking at MATLAB, there are, is a home edition from what Ernie Chance told me you can get as low as $150 and then buy like, what bells and whistles with all the toolboxes. But do be aware that um, some of these products are not available through the uh, home edition of MATLAB. But I think with um, new languages like F Sharp, it's putting more and more pressure on MathWorks makers of MATLAB to do something about it if they want to keep MATLAB relevant in this space. Um, so I wouldn't be surprised if these prices of, or licenses for these products may drop and drop radically. So I thought I'd put that out there and to see, let you know what I think. Specifically, um, this is not supposed to be a flame war or what's better than what. What I am looking for, if people can again help me, specifically from those that know the Mat, sorry, the Python in our world uh, might be out of date. What is their equivalent to with MuPad? What is their equivalent to Simulink, Production Server, and all these other um, capabilities? How is the parallelization for distributed computing? Um, and I know that you can integrate C and C++. It's something I am interested in uh, Python. I may look at it, but I hope to God it's not as flaky as the uh, RCPP because despite its power, it's still not as the same as uh, code generation. Okay, hopefully this video helps you out and uh, I'd be interested to hear back your feedback, good or bad, because um, hey, I want to learn and make this process better. Talk to you later.